Hi, my name is Sean Taylor. That's my friend Chris Ford, aka the Objective Geek of YouTube and Twitter. And today we are here to talk to you about the Western Air Temple that is Book 3 Fire, Episode 12, Episode 52 overall. Uh, it's going to be really hard to follow up the fun time that we had last week, but we're going to try. We're, we're going to come back and, you know, we're already here just as well, just as well record something. And so, uh, yeah, we'll give it our best shot. Thanks for listening to Avatar, The Last Podcasters. But before we get started, as always, Chris, how is your week going? <laughs> uh, my week is going, uh, going pretty good. Um, we mentioned before that I applied for a job, had an interview, got that job. So that's good. Start that in like two and a half weeks. Um, so that should be a good uh, transition in life, I think, in a very kind of hectic time. Not just because of everything going on in the world, but because I am spending a child in next month. I can officially say next month now, so that's cool. Uh, <laughs> um, Video-wise, um, I just released today a new Avatar video about the top 10 underrated characters in the Avatar universe, so be sure to check that out. Um, it's been a while since I made a video, so it was fun to get Get back in there and start. If Cabbage Guy is not in it, something. I'm not watching. Sorry, man. Uh, Cabbage Guy is in fact. I call out Cabbage Guy because I don't think Cabbage Guy yes. is underrated. He has. A, he's Wait, on what? a shirt. He's no. He's not in it. Oh. Someone else is in it. Foamy Mouth Guy is in it. Foamy Mouth Guy oh, is man. greater than Cabbage Guy. I will die on that hill. Wait, but... what? <laughs> Said Foamy Mouth Guy. What? No. No. Absolutely serious. No. Oh my god! Absolutely. Okay, hold on. Find a piece of notepaper because we're going to talk about this next week. We just, we just uh, like five minutes ago, like, hey man, I want to keep this episode short. Uh, I've got a big personal thing coming up, and and so we we're like talking about like having all right, two minutes here, two minutes there. But I didn't know you were going to drop this this bomb on me. I didn't know you were going to do that. Um, okay, next week, uh, mark it down, debate cabbage guy versus foamy mouth guy. We'll do a poll also. Um, we'll we'll do the whole nine yards. It'll be fun. Oh well, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Though you can finish talking about no, your wrong no, no. video. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, well, I didn't say in the video that Cabbage Guy was greater than. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that the Foamy Mouth Guy was greater than Cabbage Guy. I was just saying that the, that Cabbage Guy gets a lot of a lot of love from people. Like I've seen him on shirts before. I've seen him, you know, in. Cosplayed ass, but, cat, but for some reason, Foamy Mouth Guy doesn't get the credit he deserves. But, uh, but yeah, he does. He deserves a lot more credit, I think. Anyway, that video is out, and then uh, yeah, and since last time, uh, check out our last episode if you haven't yet uh, with guys from one of the guys from the Aeropod. Really great discussion. Like I love those discussions where I like listening back in. I mean, I like listening to our episodes, but like I actively, oh, I want to listen back to this and see how the conversation was. And so yeah, not I re-listen to, not to, to be it. mean, but I do want to level with you. There's like, I always try to listen to a little bit, make sure it sounds okay. But this is one of the ones where it, like, it's, it's, uh, fun. I'm looking forward to it from the time we're done to actually going back and listen to the yeah. whole thing. That is, I would say that's less often than, than the other way around with, with all due yeah. respect, of course, to ourselves. Like most yeah, of the time, I just, I was there. I don't need to hear it. But when, uh, no, that was a lot of fun. Go back and watch it. It's performing pretty well, too, relative to our other podcasts. And I, I like seeing that. It's kind of gratifying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's pretty much my week. Excellent. Oh, and I've been eating a lot of ice cream. So good. <laughs> I have also actually anyway. been eating a lot of ice cream. But I, I don't know why I didn't say this before. We just buy straight up vanilla and then we do different things to it. It's usually what we end up doing not my favorite strategy but they it comes in the square containers and i really like ice cream that comes in square containers uh because efficient fit inside the freezer is important to me so bravo to the square containers that's, that's actually a lot of my week too has been eating the ice cream that i had and then i got a, a thing coming up this weekend that should be pretty exciting but it's been very time consuming like taking a course and i gotta take a test deal and then uh and then after that uh, i've been thinking a lot about i'm going to treat myself to half the fun of being a nerd, I think, is rearranging stuff. So if I pass my course, I'm going to treat myself to basically like rearranging my entire game room just kind of for fun, and I'm looking forward to that. So that's more of a next week thing. If I pass, I'll treat myself. If I don't pass, I just got to hit the books again, well, I guess. If you don't pass, you should treat yourself anyway to lift yourself up a little bit. Yeah, like that's give what myself I do. a boost. So maybe, maybe if I don't pass, I'll just do part of it and then like leave the rest unfinished as a motivator like hey go pass the yeah. test and then you can 
finish that up. So yeah, not not a huge week for me. Um, but hey, another part of your week that you had yet to mention is just a nice segue here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I am uh, done finally <laughs> with this uh, pretty much four month long mosaic art piece of static from from uh, the show Static Shocking from the comics from Milestone and uh, just called Static or Static Shock as well. Uh, so, yeah, so this is a mosaic glass piece. It took me more than four months. I think I started, uh, man, maybe maybe it's longer than four months. That might have started. It was definitely in... before Christmas. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, like I'm relative. Not... Whenever I we either, did, I either the... started in September or October. Whenever we did the uh, the full movie, you were uh, oh like yeah, 10, right. 10, 10 hours in or so. Like there was a structure down, kind of. Yeah. Not a lot of glass work done, but a structure. Yeah, I know it took about five hundred hours, which seems like a long, <laughs> long time. Um, so yeah, so I'm finally done with that. I'm gonna. One thing I love to do is to just uh, probably glaze over it a little bit with a uh, epoxy resin stain. That way, it, I feel like it'll be. I, don't, I won't be afraid that it will break. Is that like a, paint, that epoxy is that like resin. a paintbrush on kind of thing? Uh, no, it's more like a. Yeah. Well, you, you mix this stuff up like it's like half and half. They have to be exactly the same amount. You mix it up, and you put it over the stain. And it gives like this really. It it hardens it and it gives it. Uh, it kind of turns it in, it hardens into like this plastic kind of glass like feel um, and so it, it pretty much is stable it stabilizes gotcha. uh, everything so even if I have like some pieces loose because sometimes pieces can fall off um, even if that happens it, it'll be fine and then I'll get it framed well, it and, looks so yeah so it looks really kick-ass I especially like the texture on his outfit where it's like you can see every little square I think that's my favorite part of the whole picture is the detailed texture on his whole outfit. That's really cool. Nicely done. Yeah, it's it's funny. You can you can kind of tell where I've started. This is my first mosaic I ever ever did. It's not something that I've ever have any skill at. So I'm I'm really proud of myself. Um, the uh, but you can kind of tell from where I started off at and how I started getting better as I went went along. Like the legs aren't as like uniform. And uh, and the pieces aren't, you know, they're just they're just more kind of sporadic. Some of them are square, rectangular. Some of them are, are different. In my mind, um, but that all... is because he's in motion. His legs, they're like, you know, he's like getting into his uh, into his three point stance or something like that. So his legs are yeah. in motion. Yeah, but no, I, I love it. I'm glad. I can't wait to start on the next one, uh, even though I'm not sure when that's going to be. Just with everything happening in my life, it, this takes up. A good amount a chunk of time kobe i'm, I'm to like kobe that yellow look good uh, next to static no, I, I, yeah you know, I, I thought about it for, for a second because i thought man how long would it take me to do that but uh now nah, I, got, I got this one in mind of batman and robin and that and then i have another one that i'm gonna do of the four avatars um not the four four of the avatars which would be there's a great piece oh, man, i'm so sorry i can't remember this artist's name um they recently <laughs> passed away but they're, they're really great um, fan artist from for Avatar. This is an image of of Kyoshi, of Roku, Aang, and Korra. It's beautiful art, and uh, I think that one I have in mind to do. But that's like the Nets Nets one that I'm going to do. So it's probably not going to be done until 2022 or something like that. Maybe 2021. The uh, it's like put, it's like I pushing the stuff one with back the four like avatars it. is gonna, the random fire avatar is is going to be in there. Random fire avatar guy. He's going to be one of them. Oh, and then yeah, Kirk uh, will be Rose one of them. Him. And then, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm excited <laughs> to hear what you decide for your next one. That one looks really baller. Look great in your, in your basement, in your nerd cave. Well done. Yeah. And that's slightly less exciting, in my humble opinion. No, I'm just kidding. This is actually the first time I heard about this was today from, from you. Yeah. Oh, real quick. That artist's name is uh, Kenny, Q-I-N-N-I. Yeah, they recently passed away, but it's it's this. Ah, uh, you can't see it really. Yeah, you go can to your see. right. Your right. Yeah. Wait. Oh, my right. There your we go. Right. Yeah, there mm. you go. Back. Yeah. Back a little. Mm. Up. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Now turn it. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That'll this, make good mosaic this looks, right there. Yeah, looks really difficult, but uh, which is why it's not gonna be my next one. I think I might need a little bit more 
okay. uh, training <laughs> when I get to this one. You know, Batman yeah, the Animated I love Series might work out well. It just like the contrast might show out really well in a mosaic form. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of different ones that I'm considering. Uh, there's one with I mean, red backgrounds will look beautiful with in, in the mosaic, so, I think. Yeah. Um, it's, so. You're talking about mosaics and like 500 hours, and I'm like, man, I can't wait till I get two hours to fix my Nintendo. <laughs> I don't know. Patience isn't my strong suit. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, back to uh, <laughs> so so in other Avatar news, there is a new uh, book coming out. I forget when it comes out, but let me see here. It's a book all about Katara. It is going to be a graphic novel, which I think I'm a little. I wish they would just focus a little bit more on the on the novels. Maybe because I'm a little biased because Kyoshi's novel was just so mm-hmm. freaking good, and it, I think it raised the bar for Avatar. It did, but I think um, just being like a like an external production, probably, right? Like that was I don't I don't know if I'm articulating myself well, but that was mostly an external, extremely well done project. Whereas this kind of an internal, stick this feels to the very common, this, common thread of of products. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this has a lot in common to do with the other ones. Um, so it is called Katara and the Pirate Silver. Which is interesting. Katara is always having troubles with pirates. Yeah, well, What's and that, you know that kind of sounds like a. I don't know. That's, it it kind of sounds like a mediocre video game title. It kind of <laughs> does, honestly. Yeah. Like, it's a, um... I'm not going to judge a book. I'm just, it just sounds like what I would call that video game. But yeah, um, and you said you don't, know, um... you don't remember when it's coming out. Or... Uh, let me read it. Let me read the press release. So, written by Faith Ernest Hicks. Um, she wrote in balance um, the recent in balance comics uh, with colors by Adele Matera and letters by comics craft Jimmy Bedencourt in collaboration with Avatar Lost Airbender animated series writer Tim Hedrick comes an action packed Katara adventure in Avatar Lost Airbender Katara and the Pirate Silver a sink or swim for Katara when Team Avatar is suddenly ambushed by the Fire Nation Katara gets separated from the group Unable to rendezvous with Aang, Toph, and Sokka, Katara must avoid capture by aligning herself with some unlikely allies. The normally sweet and sensitive Katara will need to explore her tougher side if she's going to reunite with the rest of Team Avatar. Avatar the Last Airbender. Well, okay. <laughs> Katara and the Pirate Silver will go on sale October 13, 2020. Nice. So. I can tell you have kids by the way you read that story. That was like story time. That was Chris's story time <laughs> voice. I bet. I don't know. I never heard you read your kids' story, but I bet that's how you do it. I have many different story voices. You got to. You yeah. mind a voice like Elmo? Elmo's here. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I have an Elmo voice, but I've got a pretty good Kermit voice. Yeah, you guys didn't know yeah, you're in the... <laughs> You guys didn't know you're in the presence of Sesame Street caliber yeah. voice acting here, did you? Uh, oh, <laughs> guitar hi there, the... neighbor. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, <I> get... <laughs> you got to have kids before you can start dropping that voice on podcasts. That's the rule of thumb. It's a rite of passage. <laughs> um hey well i mean i'll probably read it but i'll just read it in line with the other comics i'm not gonna not gonna jump out of scope like i did for the um absolutely amazing kiyoshi novel of course but i'll I'll definitely read it when the when the time comes which is getting closer getting closer for me and then one more bit of uh, of news if you will before we get to the main episode and that is the the fan film from what are they called reanime I don't know if that's the name of the channel or just the name of the series, but uh, popular the YouTube, name of the channel. Popular, yeah, very popular, popular YouTube channel. series or uh, channel. Thank you. That did a few other things. And then also kind of a sad note. They mentioned this might be the last one they do, uh, at least for a little while, just because of the impact of coronavirus and stuff. So that adds a little extra flair to it. Um, but it came out middle of the week, maybe, uh, maybe yesterday, yeah. Tuesday, something like that. And we thought we would just offer our real quick, real quick uh, review of this eight-minute fan film. Would you? Yeah. So this fan film it? is this fan film is called Avatar: The Last Airbender Agni Kai Reanime Zuko versus Azula. So they pretty much recreate the uh, Azula versus Zuko uh, Agni Kai, and that's pretty much the gist of it. There's a couple different. Now we'll. I don't mind spoiling it a little bit because we can talk about it a little bit more. It's not drastically that much different. Well, there is one piece that's drastically different. But go and watch it and come back in 10 minutes and listen to this if you don't want to be spoiled. Yeah, uh, we're at 15-minute mark. Come back. Yeah, come back at, uh, you know, 
22 minutes. 22 yeah. minutes. We'll, we'll contain ourselves to seven minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but essentially, they recreate it with a few changes that are uh, pretty big. But I, I really enjoyed it. Mm. Like, uh, it I, I don't like being one of those people who, who loves hyperbole. I will say that this 10 minutes is on par with the movie that shall not be named. Even though the effects aren't as good, I think there's a lot of great, a lot of great. Um, it's a it's a great adaptation. Oh, great strong word. It's a really good adaptation mm-hmm. of of what they have, and also given the budget that they have, it is I think a lot better than the uh, than the movie. Although you know we've talked about before about the the good things about that movie, which I think the good things about this is. They don't share the good things. Directly in contrast <laughs> with one another. Yeah. The good things about the movie were anything that was huge. Anything yeah. that was big yeah. looked good. It wasn't a lot of stuff. I think there's there a lot of good here. A lot of good. Yeah, means, this thing. Minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The two things that I love most is the voice. Uh, I say voice actress. The actress for Azula. I think she does a really good, great Lyle Griffin impression. Which, for a fan film, I think impressions are more essential than creating your own character, you know, and stuff. Like, when it comes to movies and films, the actors want to make it their own, and they want to put their own spin on it. I think with fan films, it's more important to just get most of that essence of the character right. And I think she knocked it out of the park. I think her deliveries were really good. Um, and also, the thing I loved about it that was different from the show, and it's probably because they didn't have much of a budget, was that Azula and and uh, and Zuko? Their hand to hand fighting was really close contact, right? Like in the show, because of Susan's mm-hmm. comment, they're they're so far away from each other. Um, but when you get in that close contact, it makes things I think feel a little bit more personal and feel more physical, weirdly enough. And I, you know, just tangentially touching each other's body. And also, I think their martial arts was done really well. I believe the actor for Zuko was a power ranger before Uh, i don't have that information to back that up but i believe he's a power ranger nice yeah and uh you know i kind of like the end there i think fan films can can verge on that fan fiction there where um where katara ends up uh killing azula and i think that's an interesting take because you know that would weigh heavy on katara i kind of i'd like Elseworld stories. I like what if stories, and I wouldn't mind a what if fan film of like, hey, what what if Katara killed Azula? How would she deal with that and live with that? Um, it's not going to happen because one thing that, that's not the Nets. Even if they had the time, even if they weren't, um, even they, if they weren't set back by everything's happening in the world, I don't think they were going on to explore Katara's um, story in this in this story, but. I think they're going to the Katara story and maybe mentoring Korra, which I kind of like that at the end of there, there's a sense of like, oh, here's, here's the Nets story. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to watch it again. I think it's worth a, a good watch. Everyone should thumbs us up, support it. It's, I think it's anything that keeps Avatar uh, going and I, you can tell they have love for it, uh, you know, support it. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was so sad. I didn't watch it. I just clicked the link when you sent it over. And the first thing I saw was it had like had like 2,700 thumbs downs. And I was like, what? Are you, what? How can you do? Whatever. Um, so, and I said that's before I even watched it. But I, I, like I'd heard of the guys. And I knew it was going to be of some kind of quality. And it couldn't be all that bad. It's going to be a, a, what do you call it? Like a labor of love. So I was really upset to see that many people going... Yeah to thumbs down this video it's funny i liked it a lot but almost for the exact like opposite reasons that you did like i didn't actually care for the character portrayals um not the actors the, the actors and actresses themselves I th- thought they did a really nice job uh, but just the way like the dialogue and stuff portrayed the characters i, I didn't love it but i love the story that they told did a great job with the story and considering what kind of budget they're probably working on I liked all the practical and the computer generated effects for, for what they were, um, you know, for a 10 minute fan film, I thought they did a really, uh, a really nice convincing job. Again, we're talking about a YouTube video here. Uh, so I really yeah. liked that. Um, I don't really care for the, like the else world stories. Is that what you call them? Um, the, the what ifs or yeah. the different sort of the, 
fork in the road. I took this path and this is the other story. Um, but given that we are in the realm of, of fan production here, I have no issues, especially because it ended that way. Like that was the, the end of this particular story was Katara killing, mm. killing Azula. And I, I don't, I didn't mind seeing that take. And it was a nice, I don't know. It was a really nice touch at the end of a really, a uh, really good piece of work. So I said, kind of liked it for yeah. the opposite reason. Not that I disliked the things you said, just for opposite yeah. reasons. Um, and it is really in good. our, in our, uh, conversation about, uh, our next shipping conversation, our, our, puns and ships someone mentioned we mentioned before um oh no that was in yeah in our uh there was an apple review of us saying that we didn't like fan fiction and i usually don't like fan fiction um but i think that's i think the reason why i'm cool with this one is is uh one thing it's not reading i don't have to commit that much time to it <laughs> honestly <laughs> and and it's honestly, it just seems more hard, I feel like I don't, I don't, when, when I read something, I feel like I have to put trust in that author or in that story that I'm not, it's a time commitment that I'm not wasting my time here. It's like 10 minutes and I'm visually looking at it. I'm, I'm, um, um, stimulated in, in different ways. Um, yeah, I don't, and it's not that much of a variation of these characters, mm -mm. Um, it's just there, like there's slight little literally tweaks. like one big element and a couple of very minor elements that are different. Yeah. Also, this is very contained. Like, for some, I can imagine reading fan fiction and then being like, "All right, where's this story going?" Like, well, I don't know. This person isn't. This person might not write another story. This person doesn't get paid to write fan fiction. Like, why would this person even continue finishing and writing the story? Here, just oh, things just feel a lot more. Mm -hmm contained i guess but yeah. or, or i'm just being hypocritical and i don't know no, you know i think it's too hard to, like it's not the way to like fan fiction we just don't do a lot of it so um yeah that you know not not opposed to it or anything at all and then uh obviously that's where a lot of great work starts so uh but no this one uh they, they did a really nice job and the 10 minute commitment is is definitely a plus for me too because i do not read just a whole lot <laughs> don't read just a whole lot so yeah, yeah i appreciate that part as well so, you know what? Go watch it, though. Support it. For heaven's sakes, if you're going to give it a thumbs down, give a reason why that's not related to that you didn't like the one thing that was different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was really disappointing to see all those. Th the, the ratio of thumbs down was, was way off. Uh, but whatever. It's fine. Those guys are probably used to it, too. They, you know, they're doing that kind of work. So, um, <laughs> Again, that was by Reanime, and it was called... I forget the title. Uh, Agni Kai, uh, Zuko versus. I think the Zuko. last Agni Kai. The last yeah. Agni Kai. Oh, one random you. thing I want. I want yeah. One random thing that I want to talk about uh, real quickly is his is Zuko Scar on there. Zuko Scar is kind of a, a point of contention for for me because like, in the in the movie Zuko Scar was like barely anything, and maybe some of M Night Shyamalan's reasoning for that is that like, or right, if you have a scar, it it heals differently than Zuko Scar heals because Zuko Scar is not healed at all and it's been three years um and so like how does that look and like if you look at i don't know maybe real life people's burns facial burns it doesn't look like zuko scar but i think yeah, they did guy, a good job this guy here. more like two-face yeah yeah and what i would you do with harvey <laughs> and I, I wouldn't i wouldn't mind this scar like it's not as pronounced as zuko's and i wouldn't think it could be but i, I like how his scar looks if that's if the live action version is like that uh, you know, I'd go a little more, a little more subdued. I think somewhere in between this and uh, Shyamalan's take, but it, uh, it's not that it's not an important detail, but it's one of those places where I'm gonna go ahead and just take the uh, the creator's vision. Um, like, like it's one of those things that doesn't impact me a whole lot, but I, I'd land it somewhere in between, yeah. in between the two probably. And so yeah, yeah that was it. With that, let's we're gonna forge ahead to the to the episode, which is called the Western Air Temple. Again, that's episode twelve, so we're really getting to the home stretch here. Uh, and this one's kind of a biggie. This one's uh, some climactic things going on that I honestly kind of forgot about when I saw the title of the episode before I watched <laughs> it the other day. Uh, so it was exciting for me, Chris. I will let you take yeah. it from here. This is the Western Air Temple. I just remember this episode being like such a hotly anticipated episode when it first aired. I'm just like, finally, 
Zuko is going to join Team Avatar. I don't want to mention that. How how much oh, spoiler? I, I waited for, for for this episode, uh, but yeah, Team Avatar is completely defeated and really just a little uh, dejected from their loss at the Hit Black Sun. It was a terrible loss, honestly, probably their worst defeat yet. And and uh, no, yeah, I'll say it's the worst defeat yet because like they they went in thinking they were going to defeat the Fire Nation. In the Hundred Year War, and it just—it is easily the largest scale defeat. It's not yes. just one character losing losing something personal or a small yeah. battle. It's the largest scale defeat by by a long shot. Yeah. Uh, so they retreat to the Western Air Temple, um, which is, I mean, one small little nitpick here. So they're walking right, and then Toph is like, "Oh, we're here," and then they're like, "What are you talking about? We're here?" And like, you see this vast. Like they're at the edge of a cliff. Like, where were they going to walk to after that? Like, I'm not. I don't know. I guess they were going to get on Appa or something. But right, that's just a, was their a next random... step in a literal <laughs> yeah. and figurative way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they get there. Aang, he's he's being um, irresponsible. He is. He doesn't want to talk to anyone about this. Probably because he feels mm-hmm. a lot of. Uh, shame about losing again and he just kind of wants to forget about it and they have these conversations about like all right well we need to find another fire bidding teacher and um oh crap i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> sorry okay maybe i'm not gonna sneeze look at and, the light look up into the lights yeah. uh, and um you know all right who are we gonna find and lo and behold um zuko gets there <laughs> But I love one thing I love about he prepped to get there because like all right huh? he did he is running through he just, his forgiveness speech yeah. it, he kind of I don't know it makes you makes you level with him real quick like all right he's he's yeah. not just gonna barge like, in like an idiot he's understanding the uh, potential what do we call it? the pen- <laughs> potential conflict here yeah he's he's you know, he's reading situation and this is my daughter's favorite Avatar episode like almost. At her own, she probably from there, but just because of this. But no, she'll be distracting to me. But um, well, and then then we honestly probably would be like a flag for kids video. Like it'd be fun, but it might actually be a, a flaggable <laughs> thing if she's on here. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We'll um, do one for Facebook someday. A little Facebook <laughs> group review. Um, but her favorite part is when she goes talking to the frog, and it's like. <laughs> Well, what? And the frog jumps on his head. Like, that cracks her up every <laughs> single time. It's cracking me up thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I love Zuko's impressions of his uncle and his sister, Azula. This is just really good Zuko stuff because it really humanizes him because he, he, he's on the outs here. Um, yeah, so he's he, he meets up with Team Avatar. And uh, and they're pretty much like, no, we're not gonna accept you at all, and and you know they pretty much kick his butt. <laughs> Katara water bends and and he has to leave, um, which is all. It's all. It's such an interesting uh, situation happening because he's he just comes along. Hey, Suko here, and it's so nonchalant. <laughs> like I crack up laughing at this moment too because it's just. It's just so awkward. Like, hey, Suko here. I don't know why it's so funny to me. Uh, expectations. That's why. Because <laughs> because other characters aren't expecting him to act that way. And it feels. But I love how it, it feels real. Like it feels like that could be an awkward high school moment. It's easy yeah. to level with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I like how like Zuko's like well, you're probably surprised to see me. Well, no, you always chase us around. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Like he can't. He can't. <laughs> this episode just cracks me up. I feel like I should have rated this episode higher because of how funny. The thing is, the humor in this episode, it's not like it's 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 not cave of two lovers or boomy funny it's it's uh yeah it's just it's just situational character it's like boy meets world or like sitcom kind of funny almost yeah boy, boy meets world might be a good a good i don't know why uh, this person came to mind it just that kind of level know. of un, uh like uncomfortable yeah. humor is what hit yeah. me. 
I think it's like, yeah, it's, I can't just laugh all the way through this episode, but um, really great me. You know, he, he tells him like, hey, you know, I've, I've been through some things, but, you know, I've changed now, you know, and then he apologized for everything he's done. He says, you know, I'm sorry I burned down Kyosha Island. I'm sorry I hurt people in the, um, in the, in the Southern Water Temple. I'm sorry I sent that assassin out of you. Wait, what? You sent Sparky Spark Boom Man after her? Compilation Man after us? Well, that's not his name, but... Oh, I'm sorry I got you. <laughs> that's not his wrong. name, but... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! I need to look up who wrote this episode because it is, yeah, I'm I'm done talking for now. Well, <laughs> you go ahead. Yeah, I can pick it up for a second here. So then he's giving his speech and um, Katara giving him like the real angry skeptical eyes the whole time. But then at maybe adding to the humor, if you will, is like they're giving this speech and they just get done talking about sending uh, an assassin after you. And then um, I don't remember if they hear the pop in the distance or if something just explodes right by me, you have to forgive me i don't remember that exact detail but um obviously sparky sparky boom man has found them and so now there's like a like a trust by what would you call it a trust by um circumstance where they have to kind of take off with zuko and escape from sparky sparky boom man I don't remember if he's calling him sparky sparky boom man or combustion man at this point no I just no like sorry. Sparky, they, they switched to the combustion man, man. Dang um it. But yeah, well, at that point, Zuko, Zuko leaves because they tell him to leave because um, they say that we'll attack you if you don't. He goes back home and um, and Toph is like, hey, he was telling the truth. And <laughs> and um, well, they someone said, Katara said, oh, what was that crap about him saying that he saved Appa? And Toph was like, well, he was telling the truth. And someone was like, oh, well, well, we can take off animal cruelty off the list of things that he didn't do. <laughs> but he doesn't go then, home, right? He's just, he's like topside. Why well, can't No, nah, he goes back to his tent. He goes back to his, his uh, gotcha. tent. Yeah. Because um, then, so after, after they have that meeting, um, Aang goes off again, and Toph was like, Toph goes off, and she finds Zuko. And and he doesn't. He's like sleeping, and she sneaks up, sneaks up on him, and he fire bends and burns her feet, and she can't see, so she's just like crawling on the floor. And she does earth bend him. She does this attack that's like hits him right in the chest. And interesting enough, some people are like, "Oh, hey, that's like the same earth bending move that uh, that the head of the Dai Li did. Long Fei did a jet and it killed Jet. Why didn't it kill Zuko?" And in the commentary, Brian and Mike was like, well, bending is a lot about to do with intent and everything. Um, and that was more just a warding off sort of bending technique rather than a a, uh, a trying to kill you type of technique. And of course, Zuko's like, why am I so bad at being good? Thing comes out. Poor Zuko. But, yeah. Uh, FYI, this episode was written by Elizabeth Welch Ehas who is the wife of Aaron Ehas, who's the head writer on the show. Not that I feel like I said that as if that was somehow reasoning for her writing. Sorry, it's not. She's very talented. <laughs> and also and also Tim Hedrick, who I just talked about how he's uh, consulting on the Katara book. So maybe the Katara book would be really funny. Oh, for some reason, I'm not that interested in seeing Katara by herself. But I mean, I am, but just not more so than any other Avatar event, yeah. I guess, like priorities wise it's not real high up for me i guess but it's fun. i'm sure it'll be good yeah um but anyway uh so Katara gets back <laughs> and and she she's missing and really the funny thing about this episode one of the other funny things about this episode is that haru and teo and the duke are in this episode but they're not really in this episode <laughs> like every time something happens they're off doing something else because they're you're just not that important. Like you almost don't want them in the big coming together scene. Zuko finally uh, gets accepted in Team Avatar. You don't want him in the scene where Zuko asks to be on Team Avatar because they're just kind of ruin the. They don't belong well, in that down, scene, right? Not like a, they're not gonna break it. They're just kind of yeah, like make it seem less. This important. Seems, 
Yeah, this scene is just for special people. Go somewhere. <laughs> so in the commentary, they're like, "Oh yeah, we uh, we should do a whole <laughs> a whole spinoff of just Haru and Teo exploring caves and stuff." And talking about he grew his mustache. I'd rather but... learn about where Sparky Sparky Boom Man came from. I'd rather hear his origin story. Yeah, that would be my first spinoff. Uh, but yeah, when Toph goes back. She's, you know, she can't see. She's still, she's just blindly coming in there. So she earth bends something off. And uh, Katara's like, oh my gosh, what happened to your feet? And, <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, she's like, oh my gosh, what happened to your feet? Top says, I, I got them burned. Yeah, what happened? I got them burned. Yeah, I know that, but what? <laughs> I love that writing, dude. Anyway, so they tell, Top tells them that Zuko firebent at them. So then, they go to go catch Zuko and take him as a prisoner, even though Zuko said that he would be their prisoner to begin with. And so it comes up with the idea of like, we'll say he's our prisoner and then we'll really take him as our prisoner. <laughs> uh, this is a funny, uh, this is a, I need to, surprise one of these days, yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Spark Spark Boom Man catches up to him, trying to kill him all. Um, Zuko comes in, saves the day, but with the help of of Sokka with the boomerang, as we mentioned before, he's really good with the boomerang, and that's pretty much the end of uh, Sparky, Sparky 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 Boom Man. He's dead, pretty much, I would guess. I mean, in this show, they don't show people dying, but there's a good chance he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. It's a good shot, right to the old uh... temple. I guess well, not the temple. temple. Mm. Just his nah, dome, the temple yeah. is the side of your head. Yeah, yeah just don't. Just shot to his dome. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll, I'll miss him. I'm a big, big combustion man fan. Yeah. Uh, and then the team um, says, you know, oh, thanks, Zuko. Didn't thought I would say this. And Zuko, again, this time, he's good at saying, like, exactly why he wants to be on Team Avatar. And, and he knows that it's, it's his chance to to make amends for the Fire Nation. It's his destiny to help the Avatar do that. He apologizes to Toph, says, as a firebending, firebender, he should be more careful with his bending to know that he shouldn't hurt others. And that really helped Aang decide that he was going to be Aang's teacher. Um, Aang says, like, you know, you know how easy it is to hurt the ones you love. I want you to be my firebending teacher. The thing is, at this point... <laughs> I kind of want to be like, well, if I was Sock, if I was Zuko, I'd be like, wait, I don't love Toph. I just met, really met her there. <laughs> I just don't want to hurt people. I don't need to hurt. But no, well, he was making a deeper statement about, uh, you know, about Zuko's history <laughs> with his father, who at the time might have been misconceived as love. Still, Ooh, at that age. that's kind of interesting. Yeah, he's, deeper. Gosh, he's thinking deeper. Yeah. Um, but also, that I mean, is, that's, I, that's I didn't think honestly, that John, that's probably one of the most. I don't know, that's one of the most uh, insightful things I've heard you say, I think. Not just here in real life. I don't say many insightful things. But um, <laughs> no, in reality, I just, uh, just thought of that now when I was watching the show. I definitely thought what you thought is I was just assuming that Aang was referring to how he loves Toph and Zuko trying to worm his way into the group by saying that stuff. But yeah, uh, what was the what was the original firebender teacher, the, the a-hole that when Aang first tried to firebend and he hurt Katara? John Jong. John Jong, that's right. Just not Ken Jong, John Jong. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then probably just you know remembering that event in his own life too. So not so much equating to Zuko at all. Maybe just talking about his own his own past and and uh, superimposing it onto Zuko. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Team Avatar lets them in, and uh, and it's just awkward. Like it's it's so so it's directed really well. Because the music is like that, that silent background, right? Like, <laughs> like it builds up that moment, and then when everyone agrees, like, yeah, you'd be on Team Avatar. Like Zuko gives them emphatic, like, I won't let you down. But it's it's not that moment. Like he's bringing that, but Team Avatar are just like, okay, okay, he's here. We didn't it's need like that. it's we didn't it's need like that, jet, fact, like, that jet motivational speech right here. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. I kind of equate it to like Power Rangers when the Green Ranger finally joined up with the other Rangers, 
It wasn't like that was like, yeah, Tommy's on a team now. Get ready, Rita. We're gonna take you down. Here just like, ah, okay. I mean, they did a good job hey, of like, got uh, somebody. Does he showing like, like apathy um for the most part so i mean it's not yeah. like they're hating them just like an awkward apathy um except for katara you yeah. get like real real quick real fast um you, you can tell she's not amused <laughs> with the with the decision yeah yeah so uh, at the end there Sokka chose to go to his room and you know it's so awkward there too like uh all right here's your here's your room lunch at 12 <laughs> and uh yeah this is weird <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> I just find it all so interesting. Um, and then, of course, Katara comes in with the... This, to me, is the Zutara, Zutara killer here. Sorry, Zutara fans. Please bear with me. But this moment here is one of the biggest threats I've ever seen on the show. Katara says to Zuko, like, if you, have, you might have everyone else buying your transformation, but we both know you struggle with doing what's good before. If you give me... If you step out of line, give me any reason to think you might hurt Aang, emphasis on Aang, you won't have to worry about your destiny anymore because I'll end it right then and there. <laughs> like, that is one of the most, the greatest, most BA threats I've heard in this show, most threatening lines. And, like, and I believe her, right? She's like, a tiger mom. <laughs> yeah, Qatar will... If Zuko had done anything, I believe she would not have resisted the urge to kill him. Which also makes me wonder, like, what stage... To me, Katara reached kind of that 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 moment in the show. You know, early, probably in, in late in book two. Like, when she re-met Jet, you know, she was really vindictive against him. Like, she was ready to harm the crap out of Jet. Uh, which makes me interested in this book. Because this graphic novel... Man. Maybe that is the case. Because the graphic novel is like, oh, and Katara would have to get over her lovey dubby side. I'm like, I don't see Katara as like that. She has different sides to herself. When it comes to her enemies, to me, she's not that lovey dubby. Like, she's ready to take people down. Like, she isn't Aang. Aang is like, hey, everyone has a good side, guys. Sakura is like, honest <laughs> to God about more like affectionate. Than, than Katara is throughout the whole series. Like, Katara's got her mom moments. That's a yes. tiger. Katara just, like, straight up tiger mom. Like, I'm gonna, like, love, love, love my cubs and, and you know, don't yeah. touch them. And sometimes Katara can be a jerk. Like, I know we talked about before about that comment she said to Sokka about <laughs> their mom. How, like, and how she wants, oh, we haven't gotten this episode yet. Never mind. Sorry. It's coming up in the, in, three episodes yeah, yeah we maybe just four. generally have seen her be a jerk to you know tough and just to the crew yeah. as a whole like, yeah. yeah like to me she's not she can be lovey dovey <laughs> i feel like mostly to ang to everybody else she's uh she's fairly fine but great great moment and that's how the episode ends on a, oh we didn't really mention iroh plays a really huge role in this episode i think but it's really more so in, in the background um really great iroh zuko stuff here you just really see how much Zuko has come along since the three weeks after him being burnt and banished to how he is now. And Zuko finally feels like he's done it. He's he's finally in the he finally knows his destiny. He's finally acting out his destiny and how he thinks Iroh will be proud of him. Touching and funny. Favorite kind of episode. You're right up I didn't rate yeah. it quite high enough. But <laughs> Yeah. Too late. It's on paper or on PowerPoint. Um, yeah, it's too late. Classic segue, though. Classic segue. Yes. To your ratings. Oh, excuse me. I know visual seven and a half. Uh, there wasn't anything that special about here. There were some good musical moments, I think, in this. Um, great job done by Jeremy Zuckerman. Um, there were some other... I forgot there was other moment of some great animation. Great voice acting by by uh, Dante Bosco and Mae Whitman, who plays uh, Katara. So I think those were a couple of standouts there. Uh, for story, gave it an eight and a half. I think Zuko takes a big leap here and also the backdrop of, uh, with, the, with the Iroh flashbacks in there, I think really adds to the story. Like this, this is a very important part of Zuko's journey. Um, as for memorable, gave it an eight and a half. I think I would probably give it 
and I'm not <laughs> rethinking about how much I freaking just love this this episode. Muscles is my daughter's favorite, but it still gets eight and a half because it's hilarious. I, I love it. Eight point two. That's the average respectable. score for me. Yeah, that's pretty respectable. Um, I went eight on audiovisual. All the things you said, I, but I did just I don't know. I like the design of the Western Air Temple. Good music. Oh yeah, good and, point. Uh, yeah, just, I didn't mention that. A lot of unique, a lot of unique stuff. Maybe not big, eye popping, but unique story. It tells a really nice story here. Um, I'd say the same for story and memorable. The only thing that keeps it from going higher is it doesn't feel like the stakes are like all that high. Like we all know it's gonna happen. It's gonna be okay. So it's like we got a really good build up to a climax here. It's not like there's real high stakes riding on any of this. Um, so maybe that's what keeps it from being like a bigger feeling story or memorable. But anyway. Rounds up to an 8.4 for me. That's that's good stuff. It's a really good episode. 8.3 average. It's going to be fairly high on our on our full season list here. And yeah, just not, uh, like I said, it's not that I wasn't looking forward to it or anything, but one of those where I see the name of the episode, I'm like, I vaguely maybe remember what goes on, then I watch it. I'm like, oh yeah, this is really interesting. Um, <laughs> even like listening to you talk about how funny it is, it's one of those things where I watch it and I'm and I'm laughing and chuckling, but I'm not even thinking of it as funny at that time. And I think just because it does feel pretty, uh, pretty real or at least pretty relatable, um, so it doesn't strike me as like comedy or haha funny. Just, uh, just sort of good, natural, well written. So yeah, really nice episode that I highly recommend uh, that you watch in the sequence of watching all the episodes, of course. And uh, with that, Chris, do you have any closing comments or thoughts before next week? Uh, thoughts before prepping for Foamy Mouth Guy versus Cabbage Guy? I uh, look forward to that. That's going to be a big match. Uh, you know, we'll, I'm, we'll try and format. That might be a good half of the episode, I think, next week. So uh, if anyone listening here, uh, let us know your thoughts on it so we can uh, use them in our Foamy Mouth Guy versus Cabbage Guy debate discussion. Yeah, hook, hook me up I have a feeling that most people... Yeah. I find most people will be with you on this. And in, 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 in your defense, it's not like in you, not that you said that he was uh, or like better or worse, just sort of underrepresented versus overrepresented. But I'm, I'm I guess the the point that I'm looking to hash out is maybe they're both appropriately represented for how good of character they are. Maybe that's the angle I'll take. No, I don't know. You just have to tune in next week and see what angle <laughs> we take. In the meantime, thank you very much for listening this week. This has been Avatar The Last Podcasters. Um, make sure you reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We got them all. Or just leave your comments down here below. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, Chris, thank you as always. And I will talk to you next week. <laughs>